Hi and welcome to DMEA's Energy Efficiency Self Audit video. I'm your host Ryan Head. Over the next hour, several DMEA Energy Services staffers will join us to discuss low cost and in many cases no cost ways that you can make your home as energy efficient as possible. Now why would we do this? Well, as a member of an electric cooperative, you receive power from a nonprofit organization in which you are our member owners. Now here at DMEA, our mission is to energize and serve our communities, and one of the ways we do that is by looking out for your bottom line. Unlike a traditional utility, we're not interested in simply selling you the most electricity possible. Instead, we want to continue to provide the safe, reliable, and affordable power your family has come to depend on us for. Now a word of caution as we get started, every home is different, so some of the things you see today may not look exactly the same as they do in your home, and that's okay. Feel free to call any of our energy services representatives at the number listed below. They'd be happy to chat with you and answer any of your questions or concerns. All right, well with that, I think we're ready to get started. All right, well let's get our energy audit started. We're actually in a member's garage today and Nikki Smalls from DMEA is joining me. Nikki, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing fine. What is the first thing a homeowner needs to look for as they start their energy audit? Well, one of the most important things that you can do is go up into the attic and make sure that all of your holes and gaps that you might have, if you can find them, are all sealed. Second thing that you need to do is then address insulation levels. So let's take these one at a time. So you want to be up there looking for plumbing penetrations or electrical penetrations, things like that? Right. Um, that would also include knee walls. It would include uh, chimney chases or uh, wall chases or recessed cans uh, that aren't IC rated. Okay, so any of those. And what do we recommend? I know you've got a product here to, uh, well, to if, seal them up. If your holes, certainly if your holes are not uh, too large, you can use it, uh, the expanding foam okay. to take care of those problems. If you have something like um, uh, a, a chimney chase that you have to address, then you would need to get aluminum flashing and you'd have okay. to buy a high temperature silicon caulk. So um, there are different applications for different um, things that you might have going on up in your attic. So, and people can call us if they have questions on Absolutely. how to address some of those things too. Right. Um, all right, so now that we've, uh, in theory, we've fixed all those air leaks, are the ones that we can find up there. What's next? Well, the next thing you need to do is you need to go in and check for your insulations. You need okay. to find out how much you have and what type you have. And we've got some common insulation uh, here. How do I measure my insulation? Well, typically, um, if you have a joist up in the um, attic and you have fiberglass bat, that's going to be a 12 inch cavity um, typically and okay. you're going to have an, at an R3.2 uh, per inch you're going to have probably your R38 minimum uh, insulation in that um, cavity. The thing that you need to look out for is uh, to make sure that your um, joists are covered with oh. insulation because that's a heat sink and um, through thermal bridging uh, you can lose heat. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have um, Something over that. Now, what, what is the R value exactly? Well, R value is simply a measurement of uh, resistance to heat flow. Okay. So the higher the number in your R value, um, the more uh, impact you're going to get from your insulative qualities. Interesting. And then another factor to look for is really air infiltration through these different materials, right? Right. Um, take this fiberglass bat, for instance. Um, you, it loses its R value if it's compressed, as this is compressed. Mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure that... Um, you're fluffy and mm -hmm. you haven't compressed it and then you want to make sure you can come back with uh, pouring more insulation over it to bring it up to the R38 um, through using cellulose which is an air barrier um, or you can use fiberglass bat but you need to take the facing off of the bat and then um, install it perpendicular okay. so that it covers the so joist. So it covers up those joists. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay, so fiberglass, most people are familiar with. This has been around for, seems like forever now. Right, right. That was the product choice about 20 years ago. Um, We've got some homes. here. This was kind of a, the blow-in fiberglass. It's right. kind of more of that pink color that people right. may be familiar with in their homes. Um, what's this stuff here? So this is cellulose. That's cellulose. Okay. That's a very good product. It's um, ground-up newspaper. Really? It's 80 percent recyclable. It has all those qualities of being fireproof, bug-proof, soundproof, and it's got an um, air barrier. Interesting. And you can see, I don't know if you can see around the front, but there's a real difference between how much this fills the gaps and like the fiberglass. It looks like there's some voids there. That's right. So that's a real advantage of this type of product. Now what about uh, here? You've got some foam insulation. 
Right. Foam insulation is typically used in new constructions. Um, however, you can do retrofits with foam, but um, it's got an excellent um, R value property of an R5 to an R7. Oh, wow. But typically, you need to call a professional to install your okay. foam insulation. And this final insulation material, I've not seen this before. What is this? That is uh, fairly new. This is a denim um, insulation, and actually, it's uh, from blue jeans, if you will. Hmm. Um, it's a fire retardant. It has an uh, R value of 3.7, um, and it has a pretty solid um, air barrier. And this is a really a, a green product. Uh, very green. Interesting. So how do you measure these products? How much insulation do I need? I mean, you've thrown around R values. What, what do we recommend? Well, we recommend for Colorado um, taking into effect our location here and altitude and heating degree days. Um, that you need an R38 to an R49 okay. for your attic, and you need an R19 for the wall, a minimum. Which can be sometimes harder to get to, especially right. in a retrofit. Right. Um, and then R19 in the crawl space, and probably you know, a minimum of an R11 in the basement. Okay. And the way that you can uh, tell whether or not you have enough uh, cellulose in the attic is take a yardstick up and at various places, level places, uh, measure and see how many inches you have. As in this case, it's a um, comes up to be an R24. Okay. Um, so you would need to add insulation and make sure that you have insulation piled above your above joist. Oh, interesting. Now, what about safety? I know a lot of people are hesitant to do some of this themselves. Well, if you're doing um, a do-it-yourself project, you need to make sure that you wear um, long sleeves, eyeglasses. Um, you need to wear um, a ventilator mask that's double strapping, one typical, uh, like typically like this. Okay. Um, and you need to make sure that you've mapped out where you're going to be walking up in the attic so that you don't fall through. Fall through. That's actually more common, I think, than people right. realize. Oh, that's excellent. Well, Nikki, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.